We catch a peek at the Cybertruck crash tests taking place at Giga, Texas. Tesla has had a relatively slow quarter while still completely dominating the EV market. The newest supercharger breaks ground in LA, based around an old-fashioned drive-in movie theater. On October 2nd, prolific Tesla drone photographer Joe TMM snapped some shots of a wrecked Cybertruck at the north end of the crash testing area of Giga, Texas. These images provide some of the best views of Cybertruck crash performance we've seen yet. Welcome to Tesla Global. The four images captured the vehicle as it was lying under a soft cover enclosure and surrounded by equipment and screens to prevent us from seeing the worst of the damage. That being said, we do see some details that confirm earlier estimations and guesses made by the community. So, let's start off with those. Right off the bat, we can see that this was likely a front-end collision, as the frunk has been completely caved in, the airbags have deployed, and even though it's a little hard to make out, we can see that the front left fender seems to have been torn away from the vehicle. Continuing along towards the rear, the only other standout detail is that the doors look to be a bit misaligned after the impact, a sign that the frame has successfully transferred some of the energy to the rear of the truck. All that is to say that the Cybertruck appears to have been built with a decently sized crumple zone, although we'd have to see some numbers to really say whether sacrificing the frunk in a collision is enough to save some lives. It would be nice if we could see the state the wheels are in, but the fender being at that odd angle suggests that it was likely ripped away from the suspension, which is not only the way modern vehicles are usually designed, but also what the folks at Monroe Live predicted back in August. Industry veteran Sandy Monroe and his team have been analyzing any new images of the Cybertruck they could get for the past year or so. In August, a motorist spotted a covered Cybertruck left on the side of the road, seemingly waiting for a tow. He snapped a few pictures of the suspension, and the Monroe team was all over it. This was really our first substantial view of the underbody and its architecture. Monroe's team was able to spot a couple of structural clues that led them to make an educated guess that the front end of the Cybertruck was built out of aluminum so that the wheels would tear away from the truck in the event of a crash. Like we said, this is how most modern vehicles are made as it keeps the driver and front passenger safe from the wheels, getting trapped in the collision in such a way as to be driven into the vehicle's cabin. Again, it would be nice if we had been able to see the wheel to make sure, but that fender is a pretty solid giveaway. This test tells us something else too. Tesla is waiting on their certifications. In order to sell the Cybertruck or any vehicle really, Tesla needs a Certificate of Conformity from the Environmental Protection Agency and approval from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration for safety based on the results of crash testing. The EPA certificate is relatively easy to get. You just have to prove that your vehicle meets the standards and specifications required by law. It's the crash testing that can be a bit difficult, as it's pretty clear when a product doesn't meet crash safety standards, but you can't really know your new truck will pass until it's smashed into a concrete testing wall. But back in August, community members caught sight of a flatbed with a pair of cyber trucks heading northward from Texas in the general direction of an NHTSA testing facility. It seems likely that the government side of crash testing is already done. So why are we seeing more from Tesla's private crash lab? Well, it could be that the NHTSA was in need of some extra data and asked Tesla to perform a few more tests for them. If there were only a couple of smaller metrics they wanted extra data for, it wouldn't make sense to ship another pair of trucks north when Tesla has its own facility right in Texas. The testing could also be for the newly hinted performance model of the Cybertruck something just recently teased by CEO Elon Musk, which could only need a small battery of tests to certify. Regardless, these tests are hopefully the last before certification, as we've seen hints of other crash tests and even a rollover test earlier in September, 
and Tesla has already had to push their original delivery event date from September to October, so it would be disappointing to see it pushed all the way into November or December because of some flaw found in the crash tests. Tesla's third quarter financial results have been posted, and while the raw numbers aren't as high as certain institutions had been expecting, Tesla remains the top EV manufacturer in the world and has set themselves up to widen that gap in 2024. On the face of things, Tesla's 2023 numbers for manufacturing and selling have taken a slight dip this quarter, about 435,000 units or so sold and shipped. This is lower than earlier projections from Wall Street by a small margin, but Tesla doesn't care, and we probably shouldn't either. Even the company's stock took barely a couple of hours to rebound from the slight dip resulting in the Q3 news. And it's because Tesla and its investors already knew this was going to happen. They even warned the public about it, so it's weird that Wall Street didn't just adjust their estimates. The real reason for the slight dip in performance, of course, is that the company has spent most of this year building new facilities, upgrading existing ones, and redesigning part of their fleet, all while prototyping the new Cybertruck, the vehicle that seems to be galvanizing an already incredibly loyal customer base. And that's why no one paying attention is at all concerned by this slight stumble. If a dip of about 30,000 units sold from the last quarter could even be called that when Tesla is moving almost half a million cars per quarter lately, Tesla is outstripping every single one of its competitors in the EV space. No one even comes close. According to some S&P Global Mobility data, news outlet Reuters has compiled some pretty wild charts showing that in the USA, Tesla outsold its closest EV competitor Chevrolet by almost 300,000 units. That's just a laughably wide margin. And aside from updating most of their facilities to continue this crushing domination of the private electric vehicle market, Tesla also has a leg up on commercial vehicles. During the ongoing run on less EV trucking study, Tesla's Class 8 Semi was able to make a 1,000 mile journey in one day. That sort of longevity goes a long way to show that electric tractor trailers can begin replacing their diesel counterparts, something that a recent study on electrifying transportation suggests is more important than getting private drivers to make the switch. This is mostly why quarterly reports aren't a great indicator of the trajectory of a company. It's pretty obvious to anyone paying attention to Tesla this year that they're preparing for a huge surge in popularity, and their work with the Tesla Semi, their power storage systems, and the adoption of their V3 supercharging tech are diversifying what the company makes money from. Contrary to what economists want, numbers cannot always go up, and making investments for the future sometimes means having a leaner couple of months so you can do even better for the next few which makes it all the more incredible that Tesla is still destroying their competition while offering a slower sales quarter. In the background of all the recent Tesla news, like the Model 3 Highlands release and the run-up to the Cybertruck's first deliveries, the company has been slowly working away on one of their most unique superchargers. And on September 28th, they officially broke ground. Now, obviously, Tesla has a lot of superchargers in California at this point, but this location is sort of an experiment to see if Tesla can run some other amenities alongside their charging services. They want to make a 50s retro future-style diner with a full drive-in theater. Designs for this location were leaked back in February 2022, when the permits and original floor plans were discovered, it was envisioned as a full 50s diner experience with some Tesla futurism twists like stainless steel fascia. But the project has gotten several makeovers since then, as new architecture projects often do. And now, the station will look more like these renderings. The 32 supercharger station will be built right in Hollywood, California, at 7001 West Santa Monica Boulevard. The plot is 24,544 square feet, including the parking lot, 
transformer utility area, two-story restaurant, and the two massive 40-foot high, 63-foot long drive-in movie screens. The floor plans don't seem to have changed much since they shifted from a single-story diner to a rounded two-story location with a balcony so folks can take in movies from the second floor. The layout is designed around giving customers a good view of the movies, both from the restaurant and from their cars, if they want that classic drive-in experience. Understandably, there have been several permit changes and requests back and forth with the city authorities before construction was approved. Anyone who has lived close to any advertising screens can vouch for the need to be careful about where those things point, and these movie screens are truly gigantic. But since ground has officially been broken, everything has likely been taken care of in that regard. Constructions like this don't tend to take long unless some technical issues rear their heads later in the build. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more Tesla news from around the globe.